Shalom, shalom, kulam. Uh, shalom, shalom, kulam. This is Uziahu Ben Yehuda from Afro-Asiatic Hebrew. I just want to talk um, a little bit about Afro- Afro-Asiatic Hebrew culture and food. Um, I made a post earlier for those who are um, Facebook friends with me or whatever. I made a post earlier. And what I did, I posted... Um, Something I'm trying to make. I made a um, basically. I think it's been like a year now. I said, you know what? Let me start fo- trying to focus on Afro-Asiatic Hebrew culture because Israel is a nation, not a religion. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what? Let me focus on our culture more because when people think of so-called African Americans, they don't think about us being a nation, us having a culture anything like that so i said you know what um because i know we lost a lot when we came over to america so i said you know let me just try try my best and my effort to try to see what we can do you know what i'm saying and so like i think like a year ago um um i we was you know me and the family we was coming up um, coming up with like a food idea. I said, you know what? Um, I remember that lentils was something that the Afro-Asiatic Hebrews ate back, you know, back in the day. That was one of our, um, um, you know, we had lentils. You know, I think we had chickpeas and we had lentils. So I said, you know what? Let me make something, you know, um, the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to try to make the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew cookbook. So that's when I give out the recipes and all that type of stuff. So y'all can purchase that. So I'm going to try to work on that. See what I can do with that. But anyway, I made the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils. Um, we put some spinach in it. We put some kale in it. Add the certain seasonings or whatever. And, um, and so... When I was trying, I'm like, man, you know, I was having people try it or whatever. And they was like, yo, it's good. So I've been actually eating the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils consistently. You know what I'm saying? It's like for me, it's like my staple every, you know, um, like every weekend I'm, I'm eating the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So. And what I do. Because, you know, I eat. I eat a lot of injera as well. So what I do, um, usually when someone eats injera, they may have a very big plate, like a community plate, or they might have their own. And you, and what you do, you spread a big piece of injera on the plate, and then you put the sauces on on top of the injera. Then you break a piece of the injera off and you eat it. You know, and so. Um, when I thought about it, I said, okay, you know, so-called African-Americans, what are we? Are we originally East Africans or are we West Africans? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, they just remember like, oh, you know, the transatlantic slave trade, you came, you know, you was picked up from the West, you was brought to America, so you are West Africans. But actually, um, if you go a little bit further, if you go back, you know, um, our ancestors are actually... You know, out of Noah's three sons, you had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. We are Shemitic. So that's why we say Shem or Shemitic, because we come from Noah's sons, Shem. And um, and just as a point, I always like to say that Ham and Shem looked alike. The sons of Ham was melanated. They were black. They were African. They were Edenic. You know, um, the, the sons of Shem is the same. You know, so the Shemitic nations is um, they're black, they're melanated, they're African, they're Edenic. And um need some water. Excuse me. Yeah, so anyway, make a long story short. I say, you know what? Afro-Asiatic Hebrews were actually East Africans. We're North East Africans. And when you think about the food in East Africa, what's the number one food that you think about in East Africa? You think about injera. I said, you know what? Hey, we're Northeast Africans. 
You know what I'm saying? And yet it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, you'll be surprised. A lot of a lot of people are liking like in jet or they're getting um they're getting exposed to um east african food habasha food you know there's a very close connection between afro-asiatic hebrew and habasha culture habasha is really kind of like the shemitic like the shemitic core you have the amharic ethiopians and you got the tigrinya you know the tigrinya air trends and um, one thing I noticed, I'm like, yo, when you when you listen to like their language, when you listen to their names, you know, when you listen to their language, they got bait, bait is house, but in Hebrew, bait is house, email is camel, you know what I'm saying? And Hebrew, email is camel, you know, there's a bunch of words, man, that's um, very close and I'm hard to bring it, get is. Tigre and Hebrew. Those are um, Shemitic languages. Um, out of the Afro-Asiatic Shemitic language, out, out of the Hebrew, the Arabic, you know, the is, I'm hard, Tigre, yeah, Tigre. Hebrew is the oldest language of those languages. You know what I'm saying? Of those Shemitic languages. And um, as we're looking more and more, we're seeing that a lot of other languages, like a lot of languages is kind of stemming from Hebrew. You know, many people may not agree with that, but that's what we're looking into. But anyway, make a long story short, you have a lot of people, how should they have these um, basically Hebraic names, um, Hebraic culture and stuff like that. I'm like, you know what? Hey, man, we're Northeast Africans. The East African, um, the popular East African dish is in Jetta. so hey afro-asiatic hebrews us we eat in Jetta too you know what i'm saying we're east africans we're northeast africans we're shemitic you know what i'm saying and we're afro-asiatic and i thought about it, i'm like okay and, okay so in Jetta will be one of one of the breads you know what i'm saying and then i thought i'm like okay but in the middle east area what's what's the bread that they eat they eat pita bread i said okay you know what i'm saying so first we have the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils. You know, I'm going to be trying to make a recipe book or whatever. We got the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils. Um, we put it in a glass bowl. Um, so so we put the, the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentil stew in a, in a glass bowl in the middle of the plate. We have a plate and then we roll up some manjata around and we just take the piece of manjata and we eat um the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils with that and then and then the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils we have spinach we have kale together we put the seasonings and we have the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils man it's good especially with vendetta it's good it's good or sometimes you know if we don't have vendetta you can eat it with um the quinoa you know what I'm saying you can um put some quinoa in the bowl and put the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew lentils on, on top of the quinoa, you get your spoon, you eat that, you know what I'm saying? Or you can have it with, you know, um, you can have it with the injetta. You know what I'm saying? It's very good. Um, then you have the pita bread, you know what I'm saying? And then, you, of course, we got the chickpeas. So you got the hummus, the olives, the baba ganoush, the tabbouleh, you know what I'm saying? That's Afro-Asiatic Hebrew dishes. We, we eating that as well. Then you got to think about us in America, the so-called, what's the so-called Afro-Asiatic um, Hebrew bread in America? That's cornbread. Well, you know, we'll update it, have like some blue organic blue cornbread. You know what I'm saying? Like just making it, just taking it to the next level. And um, and another thing that we like to do with cornbread, which, you know, a lot of people, they, they're they going to attach this to Thanksgiving, but it don't have to be that. That could be, you know, when we want to do it. Another thing we would have is would be dressing. Yeah. Now, um, with the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, um, some of us are vegan and some of us are clean meat eaters. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm trying to develop something where we cater to our um, Afro-Asiatic Hebrew vegan community. And also we cater to the Afro-Asiatic um, Hebrew clean meat community as well. And, you know, and when we're having functions where we have, we definitely have something for our vegan eaters and for the clean meat eaters as well. You know what I'm saying? So we can have like 
the vegan version of everything that we're eating and then also have like i guess like the clean you know the clean the clean meat version you know so that that's something i was thinking about i was thinking about you know and jetta pita bread cornbread dressing um or even non bread possibly you know what i'm saying i know um sometimes how much people they make hambasha that's i like that too you know what i'm saying so those are the different breads. You know, we have lentils, we have chickpeas, we have um, eggplant, we have black beans. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to look at some of the different legumes, beans, you know, grains and stuff that we had back then, but also adding a, a updated twist. You know what I'm saying? Because we lost a lot. So now we got to kind of pick our culture back up. You know what I'm saying? And um, one thing I appreciate Habasha culture because it's um, Habasha culture is like right now it's the East, you know, the East African kind of leading culture. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot from my um, hard Ethiopian community, my Aromo, um, you know, my Cushetic, my, my Cushetic fam, my, the Eastern Cushetic, my Aromo family, my um, Somali family, my Eastern, my Eastern. Cushetic, Afro-Asiatic family. I'm learning from my Shemitic family, um, the Afro-Arab, the Afro-Palestinian, the, um, you know what I'm saying? The Habasha, which is the Ethiopian Amhart, the uh, Tigrinya, Eritrean, you know, Tigray, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have friends from all of them, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just learning, I'm learning a lot. So what I'm doing, I'm just trying to establish something for us, for Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, where it's not dogmatic, it's not extra aggressive, it's not religious, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we are a part of the Edenic continent, which is Africa and Middle East together as the Edenic continent, one Eden, you know, one Africa, Africa unite, you know, we're East Africans too, but we're Northeast Africans. We're up north a little bit into the east, so we're Northeast African. You know what I'm saying? Um, we share similar culture, language, customs with our East African neighbors and family. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's some things that they do that still go back to our ancient Hebrew ancestors. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just, I was actually just going over something. Let me see. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. All right. I just went over something. Um, I'm gonna just read off. I'm, I'm gonna just read off because I know I already have some um, videos on it. You can go check it out. But there's something I'm doing. Afro Asia the Hebrew. It's called Keep it Simple. I did video one, and I just finished doing video two. I'm gonna just read off some of the stuff. I know you can't see it. Um, uh, I'm gonna just read off some of the stuff I had. So, you know, basically with the Keep It Simple, I'm just trying to jot down quick references, quick things to help us understand so you all can understand Afro-Asiatic Hebrew better. I know it's a lot of different camps, a lot of different things. I just want y'all to understand Afro-Asiatic Hebrew a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So one of the things to keep it simple, you know, number one, we're just letting you know, yo, Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, we are Edenic. That means we come from the continent of Eden, Garden of Eden. You know, it's an allocation, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait border with Northeast Africa. You know, Africa, Middle East is Africa. Israel is in, is on the um, tectonic plate in Africa. You know what I'm saying? Um, Afro-Asiatic, we have six phylums of melanated Africans. Ometic, Chadic, Beber, Kushetic, Shemetic, and Kemet, Egypt, Egypt. You know what I'm saying? All of those six categories is melanated, Q, black, you know, African paradigms, phylums. We have Shemetic, which is one-sixth of the Afro-Asiatic phylum. 
And Shemetic is also one third of the sons of Noah. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. You know what I'm saying? We're the children of Israel, B'nai Israel, the Hebrew Israelites, Ibri or Ibrit Yisraeli, um, tribe of Yehuda. You know, um, we got Judah or Yehuda, and that's one twelfth of the tribes of Israel. You know, we have, we're melanated, we're black, we're African, we're Afro-Asiatic, we're indigenous, we're original. You know what I'm saying? Um, the nation of Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, we was established in 1446 BCE. Some people in ancient time, they call us the hit coast. They call us the Asiatics. You know what I'm saying? And one thing to let y'all know, I also want to give a shout out to Divine Prospect and a shout out to Brother Zion Lex. Them two brothers, check them out. I, I, I stay trying to, you know, with them two brothers, they kind of, I like their paradigm, you know what I'm saying? Because they both don't have a problem with representing um, Africa, representing the colors red, black, and green, Marcus Garvey. You know what I'm saying? They both letting you know that we're Hebrews, we're Northeast Africans. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're part of the continent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but a lot of people want to talk about the Hebrew culture. From my understanding, it's closer to the Sumerian culture because Abraham was in the Sumerian area. He was basically a Sumerian. Our aunt, the Shem, the Hebrew, the Afro-Asian Hebrew ancient ancestors, our Shemitic ancestor is Sumerian. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's the area of the origin of civilization, Mesopotamia, the first language, first civilization. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Garden of Eden was at, the Fertile Crescent, which is starting Iraq, Ar Iraq, Iran, Kuwait border and curving over. And the end of that is in Egypt. Remember, we started in our ancestors starting at Sumerian land. You know, we were promised Canaan land, which is Israel. We our nation was birthed in Egypt, which is at the end of the Fertile Crescent. And the crazy thing about it, you have the Sumerian Mesopotamia area, that's the beginning. The middle portion, the middle part is Israel. That's the middle of this Fertile Crescent situation. And then Kemet is um at the end of it. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of neat, you know, how it correlates together. You know, and if you look at the ancient Babylonians, the ancient Sumerians, the ancient Elamites, the Midianites, Hemet, um, all that, the ancient Afro-Asiatic Hebrew Israelites, we were all melanated. You know, Kush, Nubia, we were all melanated Black African Edenic people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about on the culture now check this out this is keep it simple part two like i said i know i have a video on it um so i'm just letting you know afro asiatic people where we stand our position you know everybody have different positions we're not knocking it we're just letting people know like you know this this is kind of what what we doing all right we do the shabbat the seven day sabbath you know um friday friday sundown the saturday sundown you know, our new year starts around a big time, which is March, April, spring. You know, and I, like I said, I know people have different situations. This is kind of how we rock it. You know, um, our month is based upon the moon. The moon is the light. So the sighting of the moon, the new moon, the crescent moon. Um, our week um, begins what they call Sunday, but that would be Saturday sundown or sunset to sun Sunday sundown sunset. Um, a day is from sunset to sunset. We have 12 hour days, 12 hour nights equals 24 hours in you know, a full day. Well, we're going to start after ways at Hebrew. We're going to start um, eventually in the future, our times of prayer. I know in the scripture it talks about some people pray the third hour, the ninth hour, the sixth hour, different things like that. So for us, um, you know, our times of prayer would be like every third hour. So if you're up around, like let's say you wake up around five, then you you can catch the six a.m. and it's it's nothing um, like you're forced to do it. That's just something culturally 
that for ways, yeah, the Hebrew that we're going to start implement soon. Where you know, six a.m. If you're up around that time, you know, we'll start it basically six a.m. It's not like yo, you have to do this at six a.m. or nothing like that. But if you're up around six a.m., hey, if you up, boom, you know, um, you know, check in with the Creator, pray six a.m., nine a.m., noon. You know what I'm saying? The afternoon at noon, three p.m. You know, um, 6 p.m., you know what I'm saying? That's the first 12-hour half of the day. And if you catch every third hour, I think that would just be a good practice, you know, concerning um, just getting better cleansing on a spiritual level, checking in with Abba Yah, you know what I'm saying? And then you have, um, and after that, you have, you know, after 6 p.m., then you have, 9 p.m. You know, if you're up around this time, 9 p.m., you know, midnight, 3 a.m., and then 6 a.m., you know what I'm saying? We started at 6 a.m., boom, that's the cycle of the prayer, 24 hours of prayer. But um, we're also saying that a day starts from sunset to sunset. So, you know, if, you know, like Saturday at, you know, let's say the sun set at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., and from Saturday um 6 p.m to sunday 6 p.m would be you know that would be uh the first day you know what i'm saying um the seventh day or the sabbath will be let's say if the sunset on friday at 6 p.m so friday sunset you know 6 p.m saturday 6 p.m is the shabbat or the seventh day you know so the seventh day what we call Friday night, Saturday night, and the first day is what we call from Sunday, Saturday night to Sunday night. So that's what we do. You know, um, the dietary laws in Leviticus um, 11, you know, um, that would be, we try to do organic, seeded, non-GMO, vegan, clean meats, clean land, air, and water animals, and also, you know, the crickets, the grasshoppers, the locusts, you know what I'm saying? Um, we're we're going to strive to do the seven appointed times of Yah. Um, Leviticus 23. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got Pesach or Passover. We do that around the month of a bee. You got uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Kaka Matzo. You know what I'm saying? First Fruits, Bikurim. We got the Feast of Weeks, what they call Pentecost. We call it Shabbat. Shab, you know, Shabbat from the Sabbath. The seven seven weeks, you know what I'm saying? Um, memorial of the blowing of the trumpet, or some people call Rosh Hashanah at the beginning of the year, but we we say that at the beginning of the year is doing Abib, and Abib is doing Passover or Pesach. So we don't call it Rosh Hashanah, we call it Yom Tura. I mean Yom Teruah, Yom Teruah, you know what I'm saying? Which is the blowing. You know what I'm saying? The blowing of the, the blowing of the trumpet or whatever. And then you got uh, six, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And you got the Feast of Tabernacle, Sukkot. You know, we do the two national memorials. We try to observe Pur Purim and um, Hanukkah or Hanukkah. Not like the, uh, the they say the, uh, the Jewish Christmas tree. We don't do nothing like that. So we don't do you know, we don't do Christmas, we don't do Thanksgiving, we don't do Halloween. Um, you know, we don't we don't do birthdays, like we don't do those type of things. We acknowledge that Yah has given us it. so like if it's somebody day of birth, I say hallelujah for Yah giving you another year of life. You know what I'm saying? So we acknowledge that we're we're appreciative, but you know, as you know, we're not extra like, oh yeah, hey, we 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 doing it like this and that. We just keep it and try to keep it simple. Um, clothing, what we try to do, we try to do 100% natural fabrics, not, um, um, we're not trying to do synthetic fabrics or nothing like that. So the 100% natural fabrics like cotton, linen, wool, hemp, silk, leather, you know, blue cord, fringes, tassel, modesty, um, Torah based gender specific clothing, you know, for us. <clears throat> Other people may do their thing, but for us, we're supposed to be set apart. We're supposed to be separate from every what everybody else is doing. So if everybody else is doing this, us, 
Um, we're supposed to be separate. So for us, we do have Torah based gender specific clothing. So we identify if a male is a male and a female is a female, we don't do anything like that for us. You know, so that's our culture. So we're going to stick with our culture. You know, a person, they can do their thing, but also, you know, they have the right to do their culture. We have the right to do ours. So if somebody else does a culture where they can assign different back and forth, in our culture, we assign <clears throat> men or boy stuff to that. People got to respect our culture. When you come around Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, um, you come around our culture, you got, you got to be like, you know what? We got to respect their culture. You see what I'm saying? We're not going to try and enforce our culture on this. If, if boys have boy stuff and girls have girl stuff, that's what it is. We stick with that. That's what we stick with. With our coach, you know what I'm saying? All right. <clears throat> we do eighth day male circumcisions. You know, some people, they also do the naming ceremony. You know, and it's, some things are cultural. We do have a culture. We can do some cultural things, not against the law. So we do have eight, eighth day male circumcision where we are circumcised to, um, males. We don't, we don't do female circumcision. That's not something we don't do. Um, okay, we have purification laws. I think it's chapter 12 through 15. We got stuff for male if he has um, an issue or, you know, when it comes down to with him and his white relations and stuff like that. Leviticus, from Leviticus chapter 12 to 15, it tells you about the male, about the female, the menstruation period or what they call Nita. Um, what happens during childbirth if a woman has a child then should be still um the purification um period is 40 40 days if she has a, a female child it's 40 days if she have a male child i mean if she have a male child it's 40 days if she have a female child it's 80 days you know what i'm saying and then during the menstruation or during nita that's seven days um when 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 husband and wife they come together um, they got to wash, you know, wash themselves, wash their clothes and wash their sheets, wash stuff. They'll be in clean into the evening. You know what I'm saying? We also deal with Torah based um, sexual and relationships. Leviticus 18. We, we are um, a, heter a heterosexual based marriage relationship unit. Um, so we deal with monogamy, but we also deal with polygyny as well as a um, righteous you approved um, relationship um, style or whatever. We deal with adult marriages. The Afro-Asia Hebrew, we deal with heterosexual. We deal with polygyny. We deal with adult marriages. We deal with modesty. Um, Torah-based gender-specific clothing and also Torah-based gender-specific roles <clears throat> as well. The masculine energy belongs to the males. The feminine energy belongs to the female. So we, so the spirituality and the psychological um, aspect of masculinity, femininity, like with clothing. So we're going to assign male clothing to males, to boys. We're going to assign the masculine energy to the male. Um, girl or women clothing to girls and women. We're going to assign the feminine energy to the woman. We're keeping everything in alignment. So male, masculine, all that for the male, for the man, for the boy. Female, feminine energy, clothing, all that stuff is to the woman. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, what else we got? So we had a resexual, um, polygyny, monogamy and polygyny. Um, Yah loves marriage, so both of those under Yah um, is is approved. Um, you know, adult marriage, um, modesty, Torah-based gender-specific clothing, no adultery. That's a, adultery is based on the woman or the wife breaking red locks, so no man dealing with another man's wife. Um, incest, where people are dealing with their family and dealing with stuff like that. We're not doing that. Obesity, male or female dealing with animals, no pedophilia, male or female dealing with kids. Um, 
um, Afro-Asia Hebrew, we're, we're trying to establish a rule where no one under 18, and we even say 19, we can start um, the middle of 18, going forward of 19. Um, um, if a person is having relations or getting, you know, getting married, we wouldn't start lower than that because we want um, consenting adults concerning marriage and family approved. So consenting adult marriages, family approved, where we're going to start a culture tradition where the man goes to the father and the mother to ask their blessing, ask their approval. You know what I'm saying? Because when we marry someone, it's a merger and a marry, a marrying a family. So we, we want to start that. You know what I'm saying? We want to kind of um, start that tradition. Um, I, my, our suggestion would be um, man and women in Afro-Asia, the Hebrew culture, man and woman marriage will start at 21 because then they have from 18 to 21 to finish college, get a trade, get a business, do whatever. So at 21, the males and the females, they just focus on getting everything done and everything out the way so they can now prepare for their life of um, husband and wife, mother and father, um, being um, a blessing to each other's families, to our community, our nation, you know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> sorry, y'all. I need some water, sorry about that. Yeah, it was just a quick thing I wanted to do, talk about culture, talk about food, talk about some of the things we're trying to do, I'm trying to establish, I'm just trying to do my best to contribute to the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew nation, uh, my people. I love my people, my community, and I also love my continent. You know, so I love the the Edenic African continent. So I'm trying to build. I'm trying to educate, build bridges, solutions with our neighbors. You know, in uh, our comedic neighbors. Um, you know, our Shite neighbors. Excuse me. Our Habasha neighbors. You know. Ethiopia, Eritrea, Oromia, Somalia, you know, um, yeah, you know, um, South Africa, Madagascar, you know, especially the West, you know, shout out to Ghana, the year of return, man, they didn't open it up for us, you know what I'm saying, with their, like, yo, man, they're, they're reaching out to the so-called African-Americans, Afro-Asiatic Hebrews, you know, Ghana, you know, our, our Liberian family. You know what I'm saying? Nigeria family. You know what I'm saying? So we're just trying to build these bridges, connect, and get to know each other. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to be an example. You know, me, Uzi Yahoo, I'm trying to be an example, you know, so that um, I'm trying to be an example. So then that way that um, we can build together. We can learn more about each other. So, you know, you might see me at the different colleges from time to time, speaking to the different student associations, the the um the Black Student Association, Ethiopian, the Aromo, Somali, all that. So when you see me, you know, just know I'm trying to build, I'm trying to have us, I want to do some interviews. I want to interview you all, my Afro-Asiatic people. I want to ask y'all questions. I want y'all to ask me questions. I want to find ways we can build with each other. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I tried to create if you see, sorry, if you see, I tried to create a flag for us. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are are liking it. So it was just a blessing from Yah to inspire me um, to even come up with the design to make a flag, you know, for uh, for the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew nation. And I've also made ally flags from the other countries. So, you know, of course, every country they have their sovereign flag. We salute that. That's your flag, you know what I'm saying? The design of your flag is your flag. But what I'm trying to do is, this This is our, it's gonna be our official flag, right? The red, black, and green, the menorah with the shma. you know what I'm saying? And so that's the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew official flag. Now, when we have an ally, like you have someone from like Ethiopia, Eritrea, you know, then we'll have, the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew official flag there. We'll have the sovereign flag of the person's country, but then we'll also have the flag that I made showing 
the collaboration of both. Right? Okay, we got the colors of the country, and then we have the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew seal to show that we love each other, supporting each other. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm going to have that available. I'm going to speak more about it. I want to talk to the people from the different communities. We can, you know what I'm saying? I want to talk to the elders, talk to the community, help us build, you know what I'm saying? So just know that when you see me, Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, you know, I'm a, Afro, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, I'm an Afro-Asiatic Hebrew Israelite, that I'm an African with you. I'm Northeast African, you know, uh, African Middle East. You know, we understand that as one Africa, one Eden, one continent. We are that with you, you know, and to my Habas, to my East Africans, view us as your other East African brother. We Northeast African. You know what I'm saying? You'll be seeing soon coming forth with the clothing, with the food, with the, you know. I mean, there was things that we had in ancient times anyway. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of that knowledge was taken from us when we came here. So we're just kind of picking up the pieces again. You know what I'm saying? We're just kind of picking up the pieces. And so we know that some of our neighbors have held on to some of our things too. Like some of our languages still exist <clears throat> and lives in these ancient African languages for more than two, 3,000 years. So even if people thought it was a dead language, it still lived on with our African brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm seeing the words, the long words, the words that are Shemitic, the words that are Hebrew, in, in Amhar, in Tigrin, in Ge'ez, in these different languages. You know what I'm saying? They keep in the culture. You know what I'm saying? Also, you have in Ethiopia, you know, they say they have the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was something that was in the temple in Jerusalem where all the Afro-Asiatic Hebrews that in their country, in their country of Israel, in their city, Jerusalem, in their temple. So you have Africa, <clears throat> some countries in Africa still have, some of them remember that we were black, that we were African, that we were melanated. We just got to bring memory. For, we got to bring it back to our memory and bring it back to their memory. And then we can have this dialogue and reconnect um, spiritually you know, psychologically, emotionally, you know, physically, we got to reunite and, and, and rekindle that ancient flame and and any mistakes and anything that we made in the, in the ancient past, we corrected that now. You know, both sides are asking for forgiveness. We're repenting. We're, we're going to restart something new, you know, repatriate, repair, repentance, restore, you know what I'm saying? Remodel. You know, so so just be on the lookout for that. So I just want to say shalom, much love. And um, yeah, um, I know it went a little bit longer, but I just wanted to talk about um, coming soon after ways at a Hebrew cookbook. I'm working on that. I'm going to be working on some clothing, working on um, meeting and greeting with the people, doing some interviews, all that. So. You know, and all those who be showing me support, my Afro Asiatic Hebrews that show me support, my African brothers and sisters that show me support, my East Africans, West, Central, South, North, my um, Afro Asiatic Palestinians, um, Arab, all that, all everybody, even my European, my my, um, you know, um, my European brothers and sisters who be showing us love from Europe, you know, Israelis, Arabs, the Europeans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just want to say shalom, shalom.